Uh, hi, I'm here with uh, Israel from NVIDIA. Welcome. Um, what is your role on the DGX Spark? Well, I'm, I'm doing the tech marketing for it. Yeah. So I'm the person that bridges the technical teams and the marketing teams. So I know enough about the hardware, but also in a way that it can be uh, digested, I guess, by, yeah. by the non-tech people. Yeah, so maybe let's talk about that, right? This sure. is a $3,000 device. Uh, starting starting, starting 3, at 3,000. Yep. Wait, what does it go up to? 4,000. Okay, so like just extra upgrades. Of that might stuff. be a good first question for you, right? <laughs> what, what's the difference between the 3,000 and the 4,000 model? Uh, sure, I don't, I don't know actually, it's just extra memory. Storage. Yeah. Four, four terabytes on the four, uh, on the four thousand dollar one, and one terabyte on the three thousand dollar. And what uh, part of the market is this designed for? Like, do you have a name for, like, I guess prosumer? Yeah, it, it's what we call it a, a mini AI supercomputer. Right? Okay. But, yeah. Uh, it is. It is really, in many ways, a miniaturized version of these things you see behind me here. Yeah. Right? The real data center equipment. So the idea is you're taking a, a nibble of the, that data center to your home so you can develop. Uh, this is really a developer box. We're focused on, on individual developers so they can do work on a platform that is really 100% derived from, from these. Right? right. The architecture, the CPU instruction set. Software stack, yeah. The drivers, the network component, networking accelerations, um, even the cross memory, right, that, that we have here, the shared memory uh, layout, that, that's the same that you would find on a Grace Blackwell da data center machine. Yeah. And you can, once you, you learn how to develop here, you're, and you write code here, this code is ready to go there into production to large scale deployment without having to worry about, is this gonna work? You know, is, is my stack ready for, for that? No, it's the same stack. So is this for, how much is, is hobbyist usage? And how much is that kind of workflow where they're actually prototyping for the big data well, centers? Uh, honestly, the, the amount of things you can do here, I wouldn't call it a hobbyist anymore. Sure. You, you, you can do uh, some really serious AI uh, work, fine tuning, which is very demanding, right? And this is one of our key use cases when we develop this product. So uh, this is, yeah, I would, I would say this is one step further from a hobbyist and, and today there's so much you can do in, in terms of bit, real business, right? Um, over a, say a 32 billion LLM, right? Just by adjusting that to a certain demand using fine tuning, that, that's already a product in many ways. Yeah. Now the only thing that you cannot do here compared to these things is, yeah, this is not designed to serve yeah. 500,000 clients at the same time, right? Yeah. So um, you, you do this at home, you test and, you, and you, you run, or even on a small company, and once you, your stack is good, this can be pushed out to a, a larger, right, either on-prem or, or a, a cloud resource that will run. And like I said, the, the beauty is you don't have to tweak your code. It's, it's just gonna move over to the next step, yeah, right? Whether that is the workstation that we have there or a real data center uh, grade equipment. Yeah, I was actually kind of wondering, so I know about the Jetson Nano, which you released a few months ago, um, and then we have the 5090s over there. Um, what is the sort of per, the, the, the product suite? Like how would you sort of grade it from like the small end to the high end? Yeah, this is a little hard to compare with Jetson because uh, it's all new. Yeah. Right. This is a Grace Blackwall, so all the all the silicon here is uh, newer than, than what you would find. Um, but the the idea is that uh, this would be your, your starting point for uh, so a Grace Blackwall setup. Oh, okay. All right. He's he's doing it. All right. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. The idea is. Yeah. You. Uh, th this is really your starting point as a as a developer for for the Grace Blackwall architecture, right? Um, we, we will continue to support different ranges of products for different types of development, right? So we have the IGX that's more oriented towards enterprise work and um, it's, it's more of a professional tool, right, than, than this. And this is really more oriented towards a home user. Right? 
yeah. one feature that you find here that it's here. <laughs> we'll, I'm, I cannot wait for this to reach homes and people start playing with, but this is also a, a 5000 series Blackwell in many ways, right? It has DLSS, it has RTX, and it has a very capable display output subsystem. And, um, right over here. Right, so th there are things you can do here that we're not even touching just yet um, in terms of, of marketing, right? Because for now we're focusing more on, uh, on, on ML Ops and AI, yeah. right? But um, th this is still a very capable Gaming home machine? computer. <laughs> well, yeah, gaming comes with, with you know, we're, this ships with Linux, right? So yeah. that's your, you start from there and it's an ARM machine. Yeah. So code, right, it, it has to run. And it, it, it's not today, you know, the, the Linux gaming on ARM is a, it's still like a, it's this moving piece. Yeah. But uh, we've seen effort from Valve, right? So there, there are companies that are working on, on, on that. But I mean, this was not designed for it, but sure, sure. still, you know, it's capable. It's I'm the telling you what's in here, yeah. silicon wise, and I'm pretty yeah. sure people will find interesting uses for that as well. Yeah, so, um, I mean, this is the first time, like, usually we see these boxes. This is the first time you sort of open up the, that I've seen sort of this yeah, open the, up. Anything this, interesting that we should look at? This is literally the first time yeah. we're showing this board. Yeah, so the board, the board layout is actually very simple. Okay, so on the top here, we have the GB10 SOC uh, that we built in partnership with MediaTek. Mm -hmm. Around it, you have the LPDDR5X memory modules for your shared 128 gigabit, uh, gigabyte memory space that these two chips can reach out to without having to create copies of the memory content, right? So that alone should give you an enormous advantage on certain workloads that you have a lot of transit between your, your RAM and your VRAM compared to, say, even a powerful workstation but that you're still using a regular PCI Express card, right? So it's DDR5? Uh, yeah, it's LP, because LP, uh, this is more like a laptop memory yeah, in yeah. the electrical sense then. So um, it's low power DDR. Yeah. Okay. But the, the performance is great. It's actually a little faster than a socketed um, DIM, mm -hmm. uh, comparable with like the, using the same type of uh, chip, right? Right, right. And we have the C2C uh, interconnect. That's the, this is NVIDIA, right? So it's our design that connects the GPU to the CPU and allows for, we're estimating there's somewhere in five times faster than PCI Express uh, communications here between these two chips. So they share design. the same memory controller and everything, right? Yeah, so uh, the, there, there's, the, the memory controller is basically provides access to both GPU and CPU. Yeah, yeah this, this is um, it's actually a very interesting topic, but uh, it's very deep as well. So I, I, I can only get <laughs> this, <laughs> this far because I'm a marketing guy. Uh, so what is the networking on it? So yeah, oh, that's another crazy part. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we were just talking about this, right? So yeah. far, we're talking about this. So let's move over this part of the PCB here. So we have a this is enterprise grade Connect X7 dual port, 200 gigabits per second, Ethernet. 200 gigabit per port. Per port. Okay. Yeah, which is wild, right? I don't, from top of my memory, I can't think of a box this small with a network this fast. Now, of course, we don't expect people to have 200 <laughs> gigabit ports on their home. <laughs> That'll be actually nice. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's not happening. But this is designed for the scale out option. So using, um, this is basically oh, a cluster. To, to network them, yeah. yeah. Okay. So using networked distributed workload balancing with TRT LLM and all of our software stack for that, which is the same enterprise software, you can develop something at home that would run on, say, the NVL72. So is it shipping with like Ubuntu, is that? Yeah, so uh, we call it DJX OS, but this is Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. Okay. The only thing is, yeah, we, we add a few extras to it. So we add, um, I don't know if I'm talking, I have everything that we add to it, but it has some performance optimizations. It has our repositories and our software preloaded. So uh, driver, driver for the Connect X7, yeah. All of these pieces are there for you. Those modules. Yeah. Are they, so did you guys announce when it's going to be available or price? I, yeah, I so that. it is available right now for a wait list, right? So people that want to get on the wait list, they, they can get in. Uh, our partners are also enabling their wait lists. One thing that I want all of you uh, media to be aware is uh, 
the, what what our partners, Asus, HP, Dell, and Lenovo, these are the four partners we have enabled right now. We're selling the same thing. Okay. the The only difference is they they're going to have different case designs, maybe different cooling solutions. But uh, this board is the same. The feature set is the same. The only variable that we we have between models today is uh, we on the bottom of the the board that you can't see because it's glued in a base here. Um, there's an M.2 for NVMe, right? It's PCI Express. Um, there's a one terabyte disk for the entry model and a four terabyte version for the top model. That that's only the only difference. How much memory? Is uh, I don't. I don't know if we're going to state it that way. Okay, but it's it's, it's M.2. Yeah. Okay. How much memory does it come with? Sorry. The base model one terabyte and the one terabyte of DRAM. Uh, no, how much DRAM? Sorry. Oh, okay. No, yeah. yeah. It's 128 for all trims. All trims oh, right. 128. Yeah. That's what I'm saying here. This is this is something that I really want people to be clear about. So what's the largest model that will run on that? Well, we're expecting uh, for the single unit somewhere in the 200 uh, billion in FP4, yeah. which is, yeah, try doing that on a laptop. It's going to be really hard. And for the stack up, it's, it's 400, right, with, with two. And all like the Python software for like the data scientists that works like the QDF stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have a guy in the booth later today afternoon uh, when we're done with the press that he is working on the Python optimization. So you can, okay. he can give you a much better answer than okay. I have. Why is that a question for you? Why is that a question? Well, yeah, why is... Just the, I mean, typically x86 is the platform for a lot okay. of right. yeah. simple <laughs> stuff. So just making sure that like, if I'm writing Python code and I need to move it to this, this fell off. it just works, right? Awesome. How many can you run in parallel? Uh, well, so far we're supporting so two, two, right? Okay. But um, again, this Stack is Ethernet, and, and the scale out is using is software based. Okay, we're offering you the the same software that we use for very large clustered distributed workloads on on systems like the NVL seventy two behind us here to use here. So that that's the interesting part. You have a mini lab at your home that's using basically the best scale out technology available today. If you learn here, you can just go there and do the same with the same code, with the same everything. 